So I'ma this uh agree with you. I feel like Lincoln did a political thing, right? Like I feel like his overall goal, of course, was to end slavery. That's why when it was getting new territory like Missouri, they the whole thing popped off was should we put slavery in these new territories? So I think of course he had to say Okay, I'm going to keep slavery where it's at because he didn't want the states that's already thinking about the the northern states that's loyal to the union. He didn't want them to already succeed from the union. So I think he did a political move and he was just like, you know, let's just deal with the South now first and then let things happen on his own, I guess. <laughs> shit ain't going your way you gotta stay, stay you know you gotta stay and grind it out but i also believe slavery was one of his goals also if he if it hadn't been if it really wasn't that big of an issue then they would have put slavery in all these new territories i appreciate you responding but i disagree with you for a couple of reasons uh the first one is remember May, I think it was May the 23rd of uh, 1861. Remember when those three slaves first made it to Fort Monroe? And, you know, they wanted to consider them country band as far as uh, Benjamin Franklin Butler. And Lincoln disagreed with that. He felt like, you know, he didn't really uh, recognize the sovereignty of any Confederate state at the time. So him and Benjamin Franklin Butler had a back and forth about that. So I feel like that is like a intimation or like insight into Lincoln's psyche at the same time and then you got to consider three years before that in 1858 when him and Stephen Douglas had those debates in Springfield remember they had seven of them the whole premise of Lincoln was that he felt like black people were not on equal terms with whites and he actually stated like when you get time you go back and when you get time if you go back and read it you would see like what he actually says. He felt like, uh, you know, it would be kind of odd basically, even if they were to interact on the same level as far as whites and blacks. Now, if you fast forward and you go to, let me see, I think the same month the Emancipation Proclamation was issued, which would be 1863, right? January, January the 1st. Nine days after that, he had wrote a letter to England. The place is called Manchester, but the actual city or, or yeah, the actual city is uh, Lan Lancashire. He had wrote a letter to those people because some of them protested against slavery, even though it was the opposite side of the coin. You had people that were still for slavery at the same time. But as far as those specific people, because, you know, the whole context, keep this in mind, you know, he was going through a little famine because the uh, embargo on cotton that Abraham Lincoln issued in 1863, even though the South issued their own embargo, even though the South had issued their own embargo just to get recognition from European countries like Britain, for example, but that's beside the point. The letter that written uh, wrote to those people is dated January the 10th, and he thanked them for, like, basically, uh, you know, supporting the union and being against slavery and all of that type of stuff. But I feel like, you know, today in 2022, like I stated already in the blog, those are just political words. Me and you know that. I appreciate you responding, though. Those are just political words, and I still stand by the whole premise of this. Even though he issued the Emancipation Proclamation in 1861, what was that, like seven months before that? Or sometime in July 1862 with the whole uh, Confiscation Act and the Military Act, him allowing slaves to join the Union ranks as far as the Army. I still consider those fucking four states that did not end slavery. You know what I'm saying? They emancipated. The 
Emancipation Proclamation was strictly to free slaves in southern territories. Those four states that joined the Union, I think is very fucking telling that they still continue slavery until the war is ended, all the way up until 1865. So, you know, I appreciate you responding to me, by the way. You seem like a cool-ass person. I appreciate that. So I'll be looking forward to the next message. But that's my stance on it so far. So i see what you have to say following you hearing this. Appreciate that, by the way. I'm familiar with the conversations, you know, that they had with Douglas and, and Abraham Lincoln. But... Like Douglas said, Douglas said he considered Abraham Franklin a friend, and so did Abraham Franklin consider Douglas. I remember uh, reading about how they, this convention they was having, and people were waiting hours and hours to even talk to Abraham Franklin. But when Douglas comes in, he waits two seconds, and he's able to talk to him. So you, it, it show. I believe it shows that Abraham thought of black people was a priority. Now what? Now what he's now he did say you know they don't have equal rights and all that stuff. But I believe he was just saying that because those were the times. Like you don't want to be too far fetched, right? You don't want to be like a straight up abolitionist. But yeah, it's interesting to think. I want. I hear what you're saying. I just. I feel like, the, to me, from my point of view, I feel like the facts of his life is obvious. He was not a friend of black people. Like, he wouldn't gain no political points in, in, in saying, oh, you know, uh, you know, I don't feel like black people are equal to whites. Yet, at the same time, I have some, like, uh, at my, no, I don't, I don't want to uh, exaggerate your words, but at the same time, like, basically be phony kicking it with white people that just me personally that that doesn't really make sense you know like when you think about the president after him and by the way i want to make make a correction i meant to say uh 1863 as far as the emancipation proclamation that slipped out because i was hurry up and trying to get my thoughts out but uh another person would be what was his name Andrew Johnson right he became the president after Lincoln remember the whole 40 acres and a mule Okay, that that was actually promised. You know, the guy that I mentioned. The guy that I mentioned in the vlog toward the end, who was like uh, the head of the United States Army at the time, William Tecumseh Sherman. Remember when they had that meeting in Savannah, Georgia, January the 12th, uh, 1865. And the secretary, I think it was the secretary of war, Edwin Stanton, you know, they met up with them 20 black folks and then the spokesman for them, uh, Garrison Frazier, and they promised to give at least 40,000 black people from three fucking specific states, Georgia, Florida, and I think in, yeah, I forget the other state, Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina. You know, they promised to give 40,000 fucking uh, blacks uh, land and the mule or whatnot, and then like later on after that, for whatever reason, I don't know why the president canceled that. Even that guy that I mentioned, the head of the U.S. Army at the time, was considered a racist. He, he made his opinion known throughout the war when he did not. Yeah, I know it was under Lincoln's authority, or I don't know. It was under Lincoln's rule that we were supposed to get 40 acres in a mule, but I know it was his vice president. Well, he became the president at the, you know, he was uh, assassinated. It was his vice president that decided to take that back. When he did not want blacks to join his ranks, yet he had to still go along with the plan because it was legal at the time. You know, like, it, like, okay. When you read about that portion, like, all you got to do is type his name up specifically. You'll read what those 20 black, no, actually, the spokesperson, Garrison Frazier, had to say. You know, he gave this guy all kind of compliments, and he was basically calling him a, a stand-up guy, this and that. Now, to me, the reason why I look at that shit as mere political words is this is the black side of the fence. Hell no, nah, there wasn't no fucking stand-up person. He made his position known that he didn't give a fuck about black people. He did not want them to join their ranks, and I believe he used to own slaves. But when you think about, like, uh, was put out as far as at the media at the time, you gotta speak 
Like, you gotta double talk, basically. We all know that that's not the real sentiment of those people. If they, if, I put it like this, if Garrison Frazier really felt like that, he would be extremely naive when the facts are publicly known about how this I appreciate your insight about how this guy William Tecumseh Sherman felt at the time. So when you take that dynamic as well as add the whole like, I ain't gonna say he recoiled, but for whatever reason he backtracked as far as the president and he canceled that promise to, you know, 40, the, the, the fucking 40 acres and all that shit to 40,000 black people in just three states at the time. You, you take those two dynamics and you parallel that to Lincoln's political words, January the 10th, 1863, to those folks in England. It, to me, I feel like it helps make my point. He was not fighting the war to free slaves. But I respect what you're saying, so I ain't gonna just shoot you down. But I will continue to restate my position, though. So I'll be waiting on another message for you. I'm standing right here outside Dunkin' Donuts just to keep it real with you. And I'll be waiting for you. I'm using a Wi-Fi, so respond back ASAP. But at this moment, I could be incorrect. I believe, wasn't the vice president under Lincoln a guy named Hannibal, Hannibal something, you know? Maybe uh, Andrew Johnson was his vice president. I'm not 100% sure on that. But that's an interesting connection to research. But as far as like the actual, actual facts, it was under that guy after Abraham Lincoln got killed when he reneged on the promise that William Tecumseh Sherman made. So, and you know, based on what I read, I'm, you know, because when I looked this guy up on Google, it was no mention about uh, Andrew Johnson being a part of that meeting was he the president at the time but so far as far as the facts i know there was no real mention of him so i'm not 100 percent sure why he reneged but you know it's something it's something interesting to think about but again i feel like it's too many facts to the contrary of what you stated about abraham lincoln and by the way i'm not like a radical or nothing like that i'm not like somebody walking around oh shit on Abraham Lincoln because he's white. I'm just going strictly off the facts. You know, I tailor all my thoughts to truth as I see it. But I stand open to corrections. If somebody point out something that's too fucking acute to ignore that uh, refutes what I think thus far, I ain't got no choice but to fucking replenish my thoughts. Let's put it like that. But I'm still listening to you. I hear you. You know, you could, you could um, follow up. And I'll be waiting to see what you got to say. Oh, yeah, and not the Emancipation Proclamation. I meant to say the embargo. That was uh, 1861. Again, I was kind of slightly nervous for trying to hurry up and get my thoughts out. But, yeah, it's 1861, April. And then the South issue there is like sometime during the midsummer of that same year, even though for different reasons. So that's what I meant to say, not the Emancipation Proclamation. But yeah, I, I, like I said, I'll be listening for you. See what you got to say. And uh, thank you for actually taking the time out to listen to my vlogs. Uh, you know, I, I do it for these purposes, but also documentation purposes at the same time. Basically, self-expression. So yeah, my phone is open 24 seven. All right, one more thing. I'm about to go ahead and head to the crib, but still, my phone is open 24 hours. I just don't want you to think I'm ignoring you if you I just don't want you to think I'm ignoring you if you send another message so go ahead and send another message and uh you know if I if I if I miss it tonight I'll definitely respond to it to it once I get back online but I'm gonna go ahead and send you one more video it's a two-part video it's on a different subject but I just want you to check it out as well and show love if you can all right, you have a good night, and like I say, when I get back online, if you send another message, I definitely respond to it immediately. Trust me, I'm not ignoring any DMs. Thank you.